evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Mount Sinai broadcast. Uh, Bible study tonight. We are so happy to have you with us tonight for another exegesis into the Word of God. Amen. We're just excited about what God is doing, and certainly God is doing great things. I don't know about you, but I get excited every time that I get a chance to expound on the Word of God because I know He would give me that much more wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word that, that I will be able to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So while we're waiting on others to tune in, we're going to go ahead and pray. Our Father and our God, we come before your presence tonight. We thank you for your blessing, oh God. We thank you for what you have done and for what you're about to do. We thank you, oh God, because you're so worthy to be praised. Thank you for another time that you have allowed us to be here tonight. Amen. In our Bible study, we pray, Lord God, that you would enhance our hearts, enhance our minds and souls, give us wisdom and knowledge behind our comprehension, that we may be in the war and fight the good fight of faith. Oh, Father, it is desperately needed in this time. We are in the last days, and Father, we need your presence, we need your guidance. And your people, your people glorify, bless tonight, Lord God, like never before. We promise to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' mighty and magnificent name we do pray. And everyone said, Amen. Good evening, good evening. It is again that we come before and then your presence tonight. And we're just so excited again about what God is doing. Amen. I'm just so happy about this word tonight. Again, we'll be in the book of Philippians. Amen. Paul's letter to the Philippian church. Amen. And so uh, we're going to be dealing with that until the Lord gives us utterance to move on. Amen. So tonight we'll be in chapter one of Philippians. That's chapter one. We'll deal with verses uh, 12 through 20. Amen. That's 12 through 20. Philippians chapter one beginning at verse 12, and we'll read down through verse number 20. Amen. It reads like this, my brothers and sisters, but I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out, have fallen unto me, have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the Lord, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice today and will rejoice. Verse 19, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Amen. We're going to talk about tonight this subject, making good out of ill. Making good out of ill. And I want to say tonight, of course, we know that certainly we are in the end times. We see a whole lot of things going on. Amen. It, it's, it's becoming redundant just to say, amen, that uh, gas prices are through the roof, mortgage and rent prices are through the roof, food prices are through the roof, amen. And so uh, those are three essential a means of life, but 
The good thing is that God said that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. And so I, I'm not just concerned about what the world has to offer me. Amen. Because the world's riches are limited, but God's riches are unlimited. And so I look to him to provide all of my needs, to supply all of my needs. I look to the Lord. And so with that, I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't suffer lack because he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And there are many of us tonight who have been blessed and better than blessed and beyond blessed. Amen. And so we just need to let the world know about what God has been doing for us. We need to let the world know what God is doing for us. And that's, amen, the lesson for tonight, making good out of ill. Because a lot of times when we're going through poverty, we're going through situations in life, we tend to stand back, we tend to uh, draw back, amen. But in this, in uh, Paul's letter to the Philippian church, he is encouraging them to rejoice. Amen. In chapter four, he said, rejoice, I say, and again, rejoice in everything, rejoice. And so we have to learn, my brothers and sisters tonight, that in everything, we ought to rejoice. So here we are, Paul, in this first chapter of this epistle, amen, he's saying pretty much the same thing. And he's really uh, making a bold statement because he's saying that even if I lose my life, I know that the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached. And that's the joy, that's the, that's the uncontrollable joy that Paul has, even as he sits in prison writing this letter to the Philippian church, man, I've got joy. I've got joy because now I know that I'm not the only one who's out there spreading the gospel because I'm in here and you out there are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So tonight we're going to be talking about, amen, making good out of him. So as we continue our study in Philippians, we got to appreciate the statement that the epistle is like a window into the apostles' own bosom. Listen, we have already seen Paul's fondness and the saints at Philippi as expressed in his thanksgiving in, 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 in verses 3 and 8 and in prayer in verses 9 through 11. Amen. In this lesson, we shall see Paul's joy. Amen. Despite circumstances which would cause most people to be despondent, amen, we, amen, uh, see that Paul tells us that we can still make good out of ill. But this is what Paul did as we find in our text tonight from uh, Philippians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. Amen. As we talk about tonight, making good out of Ill. Three points I want to make, and I'm out of here. My first point is, is that Paul makes good out of ill in imprisonment. You have to understand that at this point, at the time that he is writing this epistle, Paul is in prison. Amen. He's in prison. Amen. And he's writing this letter to the Philippian church, encouraging them. Amen. And so Paul informs them of the progress of the gospel. Amen. The Philippians were aware of Paul's circumstances, yet he does not want them to be overly concerned. Amen. For he had good news, not bad news. Amen. And so the gospel was still being preached. That was the good news. Amen. Now, Paul could have looked at the bad side of the situation, his own imprisonment, his restriction in travel. But Paul looked at life from the viewpoint of the gospel. If the gospel was, was spreading, it was good news. Hallelujah. And imprisonment was actually increasing the progress of the gospel. How? Well, I'll tell you how first. There were sermons in his chains. Amen. So Paul didn't let his circumstance stop him from preaching the gospel. Even while he was in prison, he preached this gospel. And I just want to tell some of you, some of uh, some of laborers in the gospel, that no matter where you are, no matter what you find yourself in, amen, still preach the gospel. Everything is not your fault. Sometimes things just come upon us. It's not 
our fault. And even if it is, amen, if God has called us, amen, to be laborers in the gospel, then we are to preach whether we're in prison, we are to preach if we've lost our house and on the street, amen, if we're living under the bridge, we still are to preach, amen, if we are in the woods or on the street corners, amen, we still are to preach this gospel. No circumstance to circumvent us from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul says, I still found joy in the midst of my situation. I got uh, something out of this ill that I was in. And so, amen, so uh, uh, Paul here was saying that even while he was in prison, amen, I was preaching the gospel. So there were sermons in his chain, being under house arrest, constantly made reference to the cause of Jesus Christ. He was not there for normal reasons. So his situation naturally sparked interest and discussion. Amen. In this way, the message of the gospel was being made known to uh, the whole palace guard. Amen. While he was there in prison, he was preaching to the guards. He was preaching to the prisoners. He was preaching to everybody. Even as they passed by his cell, he was still glorifying God. He was still magnifying God. He was still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that lets me know, my brothers and sisters and fellow laborers of the gospel and those of you who are helps and amen in the gospel, amen, never miss the opportunity to spread the good news. Amen. So this is why Paul was rejoicing tonight because although he's in chains, amen, he's still preaching the gospel. And while he was in chains preaching, he was, amen, magnifying, amen, the Philippian church because while he was in preaching, they were out preaching. Amen. Isn't that something, amen, uh, sometimes we get complacent when leaders go away, amen, we get a little lackadaisical, amen, but that's the time we really ought to step up when the pastor goes on vacation or when he takes a, a, a leave of absence or a, a sabbatical, amen, this is when the other saints of God should definitely step up and make sure that the gospel is still being preached, that it didn't diminish, it didn't stop with the pastor, amen, it continued. And so this is why Paul could rejoice because the gospel had continued to be preached. Praise the Lord. So in this way, amen, we have to understand the message of the gospel was being made known to the whole palace guard, most likely the emperor's own guards who were put in charge of uh, special prisoners awaiting their appeal before Caesar. Amen. Though, uh, though allowed some freedom, Paul was still under constant guard. In other words, they were still on him. Amen. He was in chains. Amen. Even when he wasn't in chains, they were still on him, making sure that they didn't lose him. Oh, yes, they heard about the miracles that happened to Paul and Barnabas and Amen. And Peter, amen. And all those boys when they was in prison before and the saints had a big prayer meeting, amen. And there was an earthquake that shook the jail and the chains fell off the folk. And so these guards, these prisoners, amen, the, the Caesar and his company didn't want this same thing to happen. Amen. So Paul was under constant guard, amen, because they did not want to lose him. Hallelujah. They didn't want to lose him. Amen. I'm sure that Paul didn't want to lose them either. He was making sure that even, amen, in the midst of his ill, he was still getting some good out of it. Amen. I'm just saying tonight, in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your ills, in the midst of going through, in the midst of your, your desert, your jungle, amen, in the midst of whatever you may be facing, you can still get joy and good out of your ill. Somebody need to just raise your hand and just give God a praise right there. Give God a shout. Amen. Because that's what it's all about tonight. We have to learn how to give God praise. And we found out out in, in our previous lesson, amen, on last week that, amen, Paul said rejoice. And again, I say rejoice in everything. Rejoice. Amen. And so no matter what the season is, no matter what you're going through, no matter what is bombarding you tonight, rejoice. 
Hallelujah. 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 I just had to get loud that time. Amen. To let folk know, amen, that we're in a season of rejoicing. I know that they're trying to say we're in a season of recession. Amen. But I'm here to let you know we are in a season of rejoicing. Amen. So we need to change the language. Amen. And we're not in a season of recession, saints of God. We are in a season of rejoicing. Somebody need to rejoice right now. Give God praise. Run all over that living room. Amen. Get off that bed. Amen. Wave your hands. Shout. Give God glory. Give God praise because he is so worthy to be praised on tonight. Hallelujah. So, um, so Paul wasn't um, letting the opportunity slip out of his fingers to spread the gospel. Amen. So uh, his example was prompting others to action. Amen. His imprisonment caused most brethren to be more confident and bold themselves. They saw that he was at liberty to, to teach with all confidence, no one forbidding him. That prompted them to speak the word without fear. Amen. So the gospel was being spread, and to Paul, that was good news. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something how folk can, can get examples out of what we're doing. Amen. If we're laid back, if we're lackadaisical, if we're just making excuses uh, concerning this pandemic, amen, all kind of there's another variant of B5 and monkeypox jump going all around. Amen. And so folk are still making excuses. Amen. Not to open up the church. Amen. They're making excuses. Amen. Saying that I'm protecting the flock. Amen. But here it is. Peter is in prison and he's about to lose his life. And so he says, even in death, I'm going to preach this gospel. Amen. And so we have to make up our mind, brothers and sisters. Are we going to live or are we going to die? All right. Let me come close to you. Are we going to live for Christ? And if we're willing to live for him, we ought to be living to die for him. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? I can't get no help in here. Amen. But amen. I got to move on. So even in persecution, amen, some were preaching to hurt Paul. And, and, and this is what you got to understand, my brothers and sisters. Everybody don't mean you no harm. I mean, no good. Man. Everybody don't mean you no good. There are folk that are out to harm you. There are folk that are out to kill you. Amen. For your popularity. Amen. I, I, I continue to, to pray for Pastor John Gray and I pray for his wife, Aventure, and the whole Relentless Church family because amen, all the things that I've been seeing on social media and posts, amen, talking about uh, what he did and he's deserving of this because of listen, my brothers and sisters, the brother has already asked for Forgiveness for everything that he's done. Amen. And if God is in his corner, amen, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And so whatever he's done, or even if he's continuing to do anything, God will hold him accountable. But you have folk that will use things like that to, to, to harm you. Amen. Everybody that's smiling in your face, preacher, bishop, Amen. Apostle, everybody that's smiling in your face, patting you on the back, don't mean that they're in your corner. You have some that despise your popularity. You have some that despise where you are in the gospel, and they will try to harm you behind the back. But let's see what Paul says about it. So Paul says, such individuals were motivated by envy, strife, and selfish ambition. They thought they could add affliction to Paul's chains. These individuals could be either be Judaizers or jealous church leaders. Listen, but we see Paul's conquering joy shining through the gloom. No matter what people say about you, they're going to talk about you anyway. No matter what people say, no matter what they do, amen, just still wear a smile. Still be about God's business because God is going to take care of them. You better believe that. God is going to take care of them. You just do what's right. You continue to preach this gospel. You continue to spread the good news and encourage those in the faith to do likewise. Amen. Praise God. So Paul knew that they were stacked up against him, but he still kept on shining through. First, because, amen, 
he did not lose sight in those preaching out of love and goodwill. So Paul was still able to notice that although you had some naysayers, also you had some haters, there was still some good people out there that was genuinely preaching the word of God. And so uh, those who knew Paul was in prison because of the gospel, those who knew their preaching would increase the gospel and thus encourage Paul. And so Paul did not fall into the trap, listen, of self-pity and despair so common among preachers. And then sometimes we tend to let things worry us, especially about what folk are saying about us. Don't worry about what people are saying. Amen. They lied on Christ. They lie on you. Amen. Amen. Judas kissed Christ and folk will kiss you. Amen. But it don't always mean that they got your goodness at heart. Amen. But still, we ought to be able to recognize those who have your back. Amen. I found out through my dilemma, through my trials, and through my tribulations who had my back and who did not. Amen. I found that out very quickly. You will know who's with you. Hallelujah. You'll know. Amen. Uh, and it just don't have to be in the gospel. It could just be uh, uh, things of everyday life. Amen. Friends, family, loved ones, relatives, you name it. Amen. Everybody is not out to see you do good, especially when they are doing bad, but still rejoice. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, so we have some that, amen, uh, they get discouraged, uh, who when persuaded think they are the only ones who are faithful, who when persecuted lose sight of the faithful because of the unfaithful. Don't lose sight of who's with you. Know who's with you. Amen. And as and, 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 and long as they are with you, uh, you know you have somebody but I just want to know the main somebody you ought to have with you is Christ. As long as Christ is with you, he's more than the world against you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout right there. Praise God. Secondly, because he could see those seeking to persecute him were inadvertently spreading the gospel. Though in pretense, though from envy and strife, Christ was still being preached. So you would have those folk that are lined up against you, amen, that would talk about you and put you down, but still they're preaching Christ. So in the midst of them preaching Christ, Paul, Paul still found a reason to rejoice because his mandate was to spread the gospel. And so as long as the gospel was still being spread, he could rejoice. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, he, he, he could rejoice. And, and, and since preaching Christ and him crucified was Paul's main purpose in life, he could find cause to rejoice even when Christ was preached by those who meant him harm. Amen. I still found joy in the Lord. I didn't let nothing stop me from preaching. Amen. Nothing, even this pandemic, couldn't stop me from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I didn't close the doors here at Mount Sinai not one time. I left these doors open, and whosoever will came. Amen. And those who came left out healed. Those who came left out blessed. There was a young lady that came in here. Amen. She came in limping. Amen. All the way from Hollywood. She came in limping because she couldn't find a, find a church that was open. But, amen, one of the members told her, Mount Sinai is open. And they traveled all the way from Hollywood to Pompano Beach. Amen. Those of you familiar with South Florida, y'all know the distance. Amen. And so she got here, came in limping, and went out walking. Had we been closed, she may have still been limping. Oh, y'all better hear me. We got to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Amen. What is this? We have we forgotten the mandate? Have we forgotten the word of God? The vows we made, the charge that we kept. Oh, we sang the song of charge to keep our hand, a God to glorify. We sang it, we sang it, but then when it was time to prove that which we were singing. Amen. Y'all better hear me. Praise God. All right, I got to move on. Amen. My next point is that we got to understand the key 
to making good out of evil. Amen. For Paul, it was making the proclamation of Jesus Christ his goal, his purpose in life, his highest joy. So it can be for us. If we do the same, we can experience a joy greater than any other joy we ever experienced. I talked about it last week. Some things can give us temporary joy. Amen. A drug addict gets a temporary high. A sex addict gets a temporary feeling. Amen. A gambler gets a temporary win. Amen. Uh, 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 an alcoholic gets a temporary uh, a drunkenness. Amen. But this joy, hallelujah, this joy that God gives me is everlasting. Amen. I can find joy in any circumstance, in any situation, in any problem. I can find joy. Do you have joy tonight? Do you have joy? Amen. God is the center of our joy. And we ought to rejoice knowing that he has everything in control. I don't care what you're experiencing or what you're going through tonight. Amen. God has everything in control. He's telling us that regardless, we ought to preach this gospel, even if we're laying on the deathbed. Preach. Preach, man. Preach, woman. Preach. Even if you take your last breath, let it be preaching. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Preach, sister. Preach, brother. Preach. Amen. Tell the world about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm supposed to be teaching. I don't. Amen. Oh, my Lord. You a minute. Amen. So, amen. Uh, we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, we can make good out of ill in just about any circumstance. Amen. For example, hospital confinement. Amen. As we communicate the gospel in both word and life, those ministering our needs, difficult situations, even at work with family and even in our church. Amen. We can demonstrate the impact the gospel can have in dealing with these problems, even in death. Hallelujah. Amen. And dying. Amen. We still can find a, a joy and good in the midst of an illness life or death situation. Amen. So I'm telling somebody tonight, take heart knowing that God can use imperfect teachers as well. And this is what Paul was rejoicing that Everybody was picking up this mantle. Everybody. Amen. They saw what Paul was going through. Amen. And instead of being discouraged, thinking that, amen, we could have thought, hey, man, I'm not going to go and preach. They already done landed Paul in jail. I'm not going to do this. But Everybody started preaching, even those who weren't licensed to preach. Y'all better hear me. Amen. Preach them. Amen. You won't preach. God will use somebody to preach. Amen. If you won't cry out, <laughs> the rocks will. God's gospel is not going to stop because you stopped. Amen. He will, he will, he will call somebody to preach the gospel, even if a dog have to bark it out. Even if a bear has to growl it out, even if a lion has to roar it out, amen, he's going to get his message across. Hallelujah. So you better get up off of that bed and you better stop making all these excuses and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Paul is just continuing here. Amen. And he's saying many get, get discouraged by all the false teachers. We see on TV and radio, amen, I've been following a little bit of this tithing situation, amen. Let me tell you something. Tithing is the principle, amen. Uh, some things are just going to remain, amen. All the seasons are going to remain. Nothing, the, the sun never stopped rising in the east and setting in the west. The moon never stopped coming out at night, amen. Y'all better hear me. So their seed time and harvest will always remain. So, amen, even Jesus talked about how Melchizedek, amen, how Abraham gave his, his tithes to Melchizedek. And he even made reference saying, amen, what belongs to Caesar, it to Caesar. And what, belong, what belongs to God, belongs to God. Amen. And God is saying, I just want 10%. He said, I just want 
So whether you want to call it a tithe or whether you want to call it a seed, whatever you want to call it, it's still 10%. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, amen. But much of their error in interest, interest, interest with some truth. God is able to use them to lead others who are seeking the truth a little closer to his truth. The false teachers will be held accountable, yes, for their error. We can at least rejoice that to some degree, Christ is preached. Many who would, would, would teach others about Christ hesitate to do so out of fear. They may say something wrong. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, and those of you who who, 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 who are dissonant people. Amen. Whatever you know about God, preach that. Amen. Preach that. Testify about what you know. Amen. And what you know is good enough to save somebody. Oh, y'all better hear me. Even if it's nothing but Jesus wept. Why did he wept? Well, he wept because of Lazarus. Amen. He wept because of those who missed the opportunity to, to know who he was. He wept. Amen. Even if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Amen. That'll preach right there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. That'll preach. Amen. Preach what you know. Talk about what you know. And don't get in any arguments. You don't have to argue this word to nobody. If they don't want to hear it, the Bible says just shake the dust off your feet. Keep going. Amen. We don't have to argue this gospel about nobody. That's why I could talk about the tithing principle because my brothers and sisters, when I tithe, God had opened up doors for me. When I tithe, God had blessed me. And I'm not talking about just financially, even in health. Amen. Even in health, God has blessed me. Oh, y'all better hear me tonight. Amen. And so uh, uh, tithing, amen, goes beyond what we're thinking about just monetary, amen, or material things. God said, I will that you be whole. Amen. So I want your whole body, whole heart, mind, body. So I want you whole because I died that you would have this life and have it more abundantly. Praise God. I got to get out of here. Amen. But I just want to close with this. Amen. So, yeah, we see in our text that God could use those who were uh, uh, in, in, imperfect in motive to proclaim Jesus to others. So don't worry about who's preaching. Amen. You got some lot of folk that still drink. Uh-oh. Preach the gospel. You got some folk that still smoke. Preach the gospel. You got some folk that do all kind of ills and preach the gospel. Paul was rejoicing because yet and still the gospel was still being preached. God can use whoever he wants. Amen. He'll take care of those who are misusing the gospel. Amen. Y'all hearing me? And it's the truth. It's the truth anyhow. Amen. And sometimes we get upset over things that God has control over. Amen. All right, I gotta go, I gotta go. So Paul certainly claimed lack of ability to some degree. Amen. So in other words, if God can use those imperfect in motive, can he not also use those imperfect in ability? Paul certainly claimed lack of ability to some degree. Uh, Moses did. Moses made the, the claim that he couldn't speak clearly enough. Amen. But God rectified that uh, that statement by saying, okay, I'll send Aaron. He'll be your mouthpiece. But eventually God used, his Moses, used Moses' own mouth to get his message across. Amen. So God can use us to whatever degree we are able. And wherever we may be lacking, he can use someone else to supplement our efforts. So, in other words, Paul was making good out of ill. Amen. Praise God. 
But God is able to make good out of ill as well. And so can we, if we like Paul make preaching Christ the major focus in our life, do we? That's the question tonight. And I challenge every believer, every preacher of the gospel, amen, to be motivated to preach in every season. Oh, we, we took a vow that we would preach this gospel in season and out of season. Amen. And so we thank God and for all of those who are now using social media to preach the gospel. The gospel is going in places that we never thought. This message tonight is going all over the world. And I made a vow to God years ago that I would spread his gospel all over the world by any means necessary. And I tell you, if you look on the screen there, you'll see that you can also uh, uh, see this message on my Roku channel on Fire TV, on Apple TV, I made my vow to make sure that I win as many souls for him as I could. And guess what? I'm here in this great city, this great metropolis of Papano Beach, Florida. But yet, folk can see me in Russia. Folk can see me in China, in Japan, in Africa, in the Philippines, in Mexico, all over the world. Folk can see this message right now. Because I made a vow to God. And many of you make that same vow. And I'm just telling you, unless you forgot, you still got plenty of work to do. Amen. Give God glory. Give God praise. We thank God for each and every one that is tuned in tonight. Amen. And we just thank God for this message. And I pray that it has inspired you in some way or another. Amen. And if you want to talk about the matter more, inbox me. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a talk about it. And man, we're going to have um, our podcast. It's going to be airing real shortly. Stay tuned to get uh, time. And man, we, we, we identify the location. And man, that we're going to be doing our live podcast from. And man, so we hope to bring that to you soon. But we want to enter into some conversations. So you'll be seeing my podcast coming out real soon called Expressions with Bishop G. And man, stay tuned for that. And man, stay tuned for a whole lot more. Amen, because I promise God that I will spread this gospel by any means necessary. God bless you tonight. I want to pray for you before we close. Father God, in the mighty and master's name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity that you have allowed us to come in, amen, into uh, the living rooms of your people, Lord. Amen. On in their cars or wherever they may be. We thank you, Lord God. We don't take it for granted, but we pray that this word has saturated the hearts, mind, and soul. I pray, Lord, that they will be motivated through this message tonight and go out and preach this gospel like they've never preached before. Amen. Use them, Lord God. Use them mightily and miraculously that they will see the word come alive in the lives of people who they're entertained with. So, Father, we're just thanking you in advance. We're rejoicing in advance for those things that you're doing and those things that you're about to do through the spreading of your gospel. And I pray that no ill, no ill will stop us, but that we will continue to preach. Father, I also pray for those who are listening and they have not accepted you as the Lord and personal Savior. And I pray tonight that those who are watching, that they will accept you that they believe that your son Jesus died on the cross, but on the third day morning, he rose with all power in, the, in his hands. I pray that they will confess that tonight and believe it with their heart. And Father, if they do this, then they too will be saved. Father, we thank you for what you've done and for what you're about to do. We thank you because you're so worthy to be praised. We thank you now. This is our prayer. In your son Jesus' mighty magnificent name, we pray. Everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. Listen, Amen. We want you to, to make sure that, Amen, that you be a blessing to this ministry. Amen. Right there on the screen, Amen. You can see, Amen, our cash out for those who need prayer. Amen. Call in and pray. Amen. And you, you might even get a chance to speak with me over the phone. Amen. Call out prayer line. And if you miss me, don't worry. We got a 
prayer that are tailor made just for you. Amen. And those of you, amen, who would like to give that this message will continue to be spread all over the world. There it is right there. The cash out. And then those members, Mount Sinai, amen, you know what you have to do. Sow a seed, amen, as well. And of course, bring your tithe and your offering. We got to go. Our time has been well spent. We thank you for tuning in to the nice Bible study broadcast. Until next week, may God continue to bless you and keep you. Is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good night.